Another edition of the Decline of Wrestling Civilization here on LuchaCentral.com. Joining me once again, my good friend, the cult icon, Eric Mutter. How are we doing today? I'm doing good, but first, I have to apologize to the uh, the American people, the Canadian public, mm. uh, the war, the worldwide public, as it were. I promised everyone last week the Winnipeg Jets hat, as you can see. This is the Vancouver Canucks hat. Mm -hmm. I have let everyone down, Definitely. and I want to apologize for misplacing the Winnipeg Jets hat probably somewhere under this couch. With the Winnipeg Mafia taking over the wrestling world these days, the Winnipeg yeah. representation on this podcast is sorely uh, depressed. So, uh, yes, apologies from you, not from me. Mm. I think it's all your fault. Mm. I'm, re <laughs> I'm, I'm representing Vancouver or a British Columbia native Taya Valkyrie with this hat. Who yeah. we are going to get to discuss it at yes. some point today yes. as well. Look at that segue. I'm on my game already. Five You're minutes on top in. Of things. With Boom. your uh, classic Batman shirt, and I've got my Chucky cartoon shirt here, Joe Martell, the horror mm. icon. No, I'll leave that to uh, Vincent on ROH. Hey, hey. Chucky is a wrestling star, too. Who can forget his Monday Nitro? When you're messing with Scott, Rick, you're messing with me and my Academy Award. There's an actual line from that segment right there that I For remember. For those who don't know, Chucky was, I think he was promoting Bride of Chucky, which is actually one of yes. my favorite of the sequels. So in 1998, showed up on Nitro to have a promo battle with Rick Steiner and Chucky won. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course he did. He was going up against Rick Steiner. Fair enough, but it's still uh, bizarre for a doll that's pre-taped to win a promo battle with a live person in the room. I am, just... I am pretty sure early 2000s Hardy Boys could have beaten Rick Steiner in a promo battle. Think Would... about how bad Matt and Jeff were at that time, too. Well, I was about to say, Rick Steiner or Rick O'Shea? Oh! Oh, 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 enjoy your three years, Trevor. <laughs> Ricochet had a big win. Uh, <laughs> no, he got his big win was career wise. He ended up on Raw, had a very good match, and lost to AJ Styles in a match that it was That's, very good. But his, his that was his best accomplishment on Raw. He did a beautiful transition into the Styles clash. Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of online fans complaining about Ricochet's position in WWE. I am not one of them because I think the guy has the personality of a wet carrot. The guy is a very smooth worker, but that doesn't what? make an engaging wrestler. Dude, dude, how are you going to do wet carrots like that? Wow. I like some wet carrots. So does wow. my wife, apparently. Wow. You, I would have gone with he's shown the personality of Anakin Skywalker's Hayden Christensen. Here you go. He's... My go-to acting punching bag there. I'm a, I'm a movie nerd, but as you can tell, it's not exactly sci-fi nerdism. So I, I've seen exactly one. Uh, yeah, no, I saw a return of, no, Revenge of the Sith. That was the third one, right? Yes. Okay. That so was I did the, see the that episode one. Episode three, yes. Episode three. I saw that in theater, whatever year that came up. I haven't seen a single Star Wars movie since. Uh, well, I mean, after you've seen episode three, which features I have seen holographic footage of him killing younglings i mean how can you how can you possibly go back after that shakespearean line right there you know uh, yeah uh, if anyone's watching star <laughs> wars or friday the 13th movies for dialogue you no wonder you're a wrestling fan or fans of ricochet's <laughs> promos oh poor ricochet he's taking he's taking a beating and it's not even monday well, this is something that we've discussed a couple of times elsewhere. You and I have talked about this in a lot of ways. And one of our good friends, Coach, he's actually brought it up quite mm. a bit. Um, but a lot of wrestling today for a baby face, we didn't mean to discuss this, but it leads into it oddly yeah. enough. 
a wrestling baby face this day is not just that blue meat, uh, white meat, blue chipper that we used to get, like the Rocky Maivia of 1996 that bombed. But mm. a baby face today is just someone who loves to wrestle and is really passionate and has worked on the indies and has been doing it for such a long time. So they deserve their shot. That's not a character. And no. it's done across the board, and it's really boring at this point. So Ricochet, who is a tremendous, very smooth worker, I, I don't think he's a great wrestler in terms of telling a story, but in terms of doing moves and taking moves, as we saw from the Styles Clash, amazing, one of the best. But that's not enough to make yourself a star mm. in the wrestling world. And unfortunately, I find a lot of online fans, they're not really counting that as anything important. They're just seeing, oh, he can do Prince Puma stuff. Yeah, but Prince Puma yeah, look- had a mouthpiece mm-hmm. and it was pre-taped and didn't have to deliver anything personality wise. Well, yeah, and he, but he also there did know how to tell a story and he had a purpose and he had a character and he had, he, Prince Puma had everything that Ricochet now doesn't have. In a lot of ways, so, yeah. Yes, there was a, a totally, totally different thing between, um, you know, Prince Puma on Lucha Underground and Ricochet, the Ricochet we see on Raw now. Speaking of Lucha Underground, Yes. We weren't going to talk about this on the show, but I'm going to bring this up now. I you saw the thing, uh, the thing about MLW, right? This, what is it, Aztec Underground? Okay. Did you hear about that? No, we just discussed it quickly last week with uh, Mil Muertes making his debut on MLW Fusion so, last uh, week. Apparently, there is going to be like a Lucha Underground style invasion, I guess. Okay. And they're going to call it Aztec Underground. And I would just like to say right now, nope, nope, (laughs) not having it. Nope. Let's move on. Really? I think of all the promotions that could do something with the Lucha Underground style, MLW is one of the better options. I mean, sure, but who who are they who are they gonna get? I mean, the entire Lucha Underground roster is either in AEW, somewhat in impact, WWE, or they're Ricky Mundo. Yeah, there's and you don't and you don't want Ricky Mundo. No disrespect, Ricky. I'd be happy if you got the paycheck, but nobody is watching the show for you, dude. No, but at the same time, you could still get some of the names. It wouldn't be the same thing. And as long as they don't treat it the way WWE did with, or I should say, WWF at the time with WCW, where they didn't get all the big names and they still tried to make it even Steven, but still have WWF smash mm-hmm. everyone all the time. See, see, the the issue is it would be simpler if you could bring in all the eight triple A people because right. there are still several people from triple A you could bring in. But at this point. Given this lawsuit that's going on, where AAA has been sued by the production company of Lucha Underground, right? And this company is claiming they own the rights to all the Luchador names and stuff in the U.S. It's possible that if MLW or even like AEW uses a guy that was on Lucha Underground or even just AAA, Lucha Libre Factory Made Ventures might be like, all right, we're coming for you now too. I so see. there's kind of a like there might be a hesitance to use these people because of that lawsuit. So I think it's, it, it pretty much limits MLW. I think for the moment, at least to using people like say, you know, um, Ricky Mundo or famous B, I would have very little problem with famous B. He was very entertaining on that show. I thought. Famous um, B, yeah. He was the manager at one point, right? Yeah. Oh, he was great in that role. Get fame. I loved that guy. He was yeah. great. Um, well, they could they could get Ricky Ray, they could get Ricky Reyes, Cortez Castro, they could get uh Cisco. Taya they, might be available, not that that's very likely. Um she is she is available. I would say the odds of her going to <laughs> AEW are the our MLW MLB. are the odds of me going to AEW. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Wait a minute, my phone's going off. Tony Khan's on the line. Never mind. Tie into MLW it is. Look They'll at that. They'll have Marco Stunt putting you over next. Yeah, hey, hey. I'm getting real tired here of your Marco slander. He's trying to make a living, man. Just he like is- every other 12-year-old in the wrestling business. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to have huge heat with Marco Stunt. Huge heat. You know well, what? you are. I'm going to be I, fine. I've held back a little bit 
but AEW really pisses me off. It is a <laughs> terrible promotion, and it, it anything they do just sets me off. On it's just awful, awful <laughs> wrestling. Marco stunt putting over a child, and then all of a sudden it's a celebration and something worth celebrating. Put on a wrestling show and stop he putting did, on a performance. He he didn't put over the kid, man. They had like a a goofy pull apart thing on the internet show. It's still part of the program. They're obviously going to incorporate something of that with the celebration on the birthday show tonight for Dynamite. It, it's, I, I don't know. I It just sets me off. I want to re- see a wrestling program. I mean, maybe, but until we actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you do with WWE. Until we actually see that, I'm going to hold off on that. And even if they do do that, it's the kid's birthday. His father just died. I'm not holding that against them either. They're trying to do something nice for the boy. I get doing something nice make it entertaining and so far nothing i've seen from the clips because i haven't watched an actual show has been entertaining it just seems like for the sake of doing something nice but there's no it's just not genuine it doesn't feel right don't make me start singing the party pooper song on you here man that's all right i'll do i'll do it i'll do it i've already i've already got heat with the people over the winnipeg hat i'm gonna get more heat here i'm stealing all the heat my way by being anti-aew <laughs> not exactly a popular opinion on the internet we're 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 having a heat off here a yeah. heat off well let's get back tuesday on track. night heat baby uh wednesday morning we, heat. Uh, wednesday morning heat that's right <laughs> but- damn it Speaking of Tuesday night, uh, I guess the big news of the week, there's every promotion seems to be doing something a little different right now. Uh, nah. we've got, we're going to get to WWE with the Royal Rumble buildup, and that's leading into mm-hmm. WrestleMania. AEW, they just had their two big shows, but they're going to be getting into the Friday, paper, uh, not Friday, February pay-per-view of, I think it's Revolution. And, right? and, and the, be- yes, Revolution and the, uh, the big beach break show with uh, Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker and the, the wedding the Kipper's big day. That's February 3rd, I believe, right? Yes, February 3rd. The Kipper becomes a man. Thank God. Yeah, we'll see if that actually happens. <laughs> um, but a third promotion that we don't get to discuss very often associated with AEW, uh, Impact Wrestling had a big pay-per-view, and they had a big change throughout the entire company. The main one that I wanted to highlight right away was the change in the broadcast team. Uh Hmm. Obviously, Josh Matthews, not the most popular play-by-play guy on the planet, no. and his wife, Madison Rain, who was decent as a co-host, but nobody was really clamoring for her to return again. They've been officially moved away. Had Madison retired. Josh is moving into a backstage role. And now we have the return of Max Stryker, again, related to Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground, yep. And D'Lo Brown doing the commentary. And uh, I'll admit, I went to my Fight.TV website. I wanted to order... Hard to kill. I watched the free pre-show. And once I heard the announce team, I realized I'm not going to watch the show. (laughs) That Matt Stryker was an acquired taste back in 2008 when he got started as a third man of the booth in WWE. You mentioned just before we got on the air that his first season of Lucha Underground, he was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I'll agree with that. That, He was at his best in Lucha Mm -hmm. Underground at that point. But the more I hear of him the more I tire of him. He's very hard to listen to. In fairness to Matt, we 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 must point out, you know, he had to work with Vampiro and Lucha Underground. And given how well that was able to come off and sometimes knowing how Vamp can be, we do have to give Stryker credit for at least making that even somewhat passable at times. I don't know enough about Vampiro's personality. I know he had, uh, I think he has like a biography or a documentary coming out soon enough. Mm-hmm. But as a announced team, you and I, we often talked about Vampiro is pretty good in the booth. Uh, it was pre-taped right. and he might have been scripted. We don't really know. He was very good in that role while Stryker, he still wore out his welcome the more we watched. Vamp was more genuine, I would say. That's good for better to For better or worse. Although you you didn't watch the Triple Mania where Vamp was on the booth and he was he's yelling into the headset, play my music before he interrupts Conan for his segment. He's oh, actually triple... no. <laughs> you, 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 this is one of the funniest things ever. Uh. I just, it was oh my god. Anyway, well, Va- Vampiro never spent any time in Impact. He's we got to know him in he, WCW. He he did he did wrestle in Impact. Did he, he did a match with Raven in Impact? Oh, like back in the TNA yeah, days, ba- right? Back in the TNA. Yeah, no, he's not in Impact. 
exact now. But but hey, give it a few weeks. You don't know. Well, um, the amount of names we've seen on Impact recently. You mentioned how. Uh, well, we mentioned on the before we got on the main event of Hard to Kill was the six man tag. Hmm. There was a bit of a change in the lineup because Alex Shelley he was moved out of the match. Hmm. I'm wondering if he's injured and they're just hiding it really well. Moose took his spot which made sense for Impact storytelling because they've been teasing the uh, title match between Rich Swan, the Impact world Teas- champion. Teased it some more last night, too, on Impact. Yep. Exactly. So they had him going. They've been teasing it with Moose. So him being teammates with Rich Swan and then the second member of the Motor City Machine Guns instead of Alex Shelley, the, the partner, Chris Saban, mm-hmm. they took on Omega and the Good Brothers. Yes. What ended up happening was the uh, Omega and um, Good Brothers, they got the win. And then yes. on Impact, Private Party showed up with Matt Hardy. Yes. And in the main event of Impact last night, Private Party got the win with the help of AEW agent Jerry Lynn. Yes, and Matt. Double team right there. Double, double team. team of the old guys. And yes, that sets them up to challenge the Good Brothers for the Impact Tag Team Championship. There you go. So we're really moving into this. It's almost been a slow burn. I might be bashing Mm. AEW, and I went a little harsh there, but (laughs) the one thing I got to give them credit for, and I'll always give them credit for, is they are very good at slow building their stories. Whether they're good or not is obviously up to opinion, but they don't rush through things the way WWE can very credibly be Mm. accused of doing. Uh, They take their time, and almost to the point where I wondered if this AEW Impact thing was kind of a bust because they weren't really going much with it. You have to remember they had to hold back a week too because of what happened with Brody and everything. So that ended up, you know, you had to, you know, take a step back, do the tribute show. Lots of factors, and, sir. Yeah, lots of factors involved there before they got back into things there. But yes, yeah, so I mean, first off, before we really want to get into that, I just want to touch upon the fact, and you kind of did already, you know when we first started this show, we talked about impact quite a bit. And we even did a review of uh, bound for glory, I believe the next day. And it wasn't until the day after this show, which night I didn't watch it either Mm -hmm. that I realized, wow, we went from reviewing the show and watching the show and neither of us even watched it. So, and the only thing I was interested in the show was the, the main event. And then that got hit too. Cause I, I really wanted to see Shelly in that match. And then he was gone and Moose is in. And I was just like, oh, that that doesn't really do as much for me. So from an AEW aspect, Moose is a less interesting uh, teammate for mm-hmm. the Impact team because you wanted to see the Good Brothers against the Motor Sh- City Machine Guns as well as the Motor City Machine Guns battling well, it with members it was, of the uh, It was more that if, if we're, in my opinion, and only my opinion here, uh, Shelly would have been the second best guy in that match. That's fair. Like uh, it, to me, as a it, maybe you could even argue even the best. He's really great, Alex Shelly. So I know out of those six people, including or seven if we add Moose to it, he would have been my favorite of the bunch. Right. So, but you now, so I did end up watching this match, and you did not see this match. I have not. No. So, and, and I will say, I did think it was really, really good. Okay. It ended up being really good, Moose. You know, Moose has it with Moose. It's mostly the out of the ring stuff. He has that incident with his now ex wife. He has some other questionable things that have happened. So there's only a certain level that he's going to get to, and it's going to be an impact pretty much because I don't see AEW or WWE ever really touching him with his past. But as a as an athlete, and especially now that he's slimmed down. He's really become a good worker and he wound up doing a hell of a job in this match. Like, and and I great on impact recently, mm, but he was, he was pretty damn good in this match. And I thought, you know, Saban, Saban's always reliable, very dependable, very good. Um, You know, Swan is a great athlete. Omega is a great athlete. Lee, and I think a great worker, even if some people, not going to name names on this podcast, don't think so. Um, uh, Anderson is a great worker, and Agreed. Doc Gallows is also there. Um, uh, he's good for what he does. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm being facetious. He okay. does a good job at what his role is. So, yeah, it wound up being a very, very good match. You know what I think ended up hurting this, though? 
well, being on impact pay-per-view without a crowd and the, I don't know if they had this for the pay-per-view. You can let me know, but the pre-show had fake crowd yes, noise they did, and it helped. It actually you helped. Did. I, uh, I it sounded so bad during the pre-show. I watched the, the Brian Myers match. I can't remember who he took on, but Alexander. I, I, okay. Yeah. And that's too bad. Cause I love Josh Alexander. I couldn't finish the match. The, from the announced team and the bad uh, crowd noise, it just wasn't yeah, working I, for me. I had heard that too. I thought I was going to be like, oh my God, this is terrible. But it was actually fine. Because okay. they mostly didn't even look at where the crowd would be. So you could imagine that they were off somewhere else. and such. So it really, really wasn't that bad. I think what ended up hurting it was they really should have just done Swan versus Omega. Like They might be I, building to that. Well, a uh, Honestly, I think they're going to Omega versus Moose. I think what we're going to end it because Omega pinned Swan clean to win that match. Okay. Which, which you would think was weird too, unless the plan is that it's not going to be Swan versus Omega. And they very clearly, I, I, did, I did not see Omega on the show tonight. So it looks like Swan versus, uh, or when, you know, last night, excuse me. So, it looks like it's going to be Swan versus Moose next. Um, and if that's the case, because remember, the pay-per-view isn't until April, which is a long time, right? long time from now. So if you're not doing Omega Swan now to take the title off Swan, then my only conclusion is you're going to put it on Moose. And then you do... Moose versus Omega and Omega because Omega's yeah. winning that title. We all know that's going to happen. It's a matter of time. So I think maybe they decided that they're going to do it with Moose instead, which I don't know. Your mileage may vary on that one. I would have personally gone with the Swan match. I think the styles work better there, but I mean, Moose and Omega worked great in that match. So I think in terms of drawing power, Moose would be better uh, due to his NFL background and anything else they can use to promote it. And look matters. You know, putting a poster of the two men next to each other, Moose is a lot more intimidating looking than Rich Swan. So having him oversize mm -hmm. Omega gives the Impact Champion a bit more credibility than someone that Omega would be oversized compared to Rich Swan. Well, from that standpoint, you're correct. But I think with the... Because they're mainly working trying to draw the AEW and the Impact audience here. Mm -hmm. And those people do not care about size. They care I about... I disagree with that. Uh, I, I, the AEW crowd, I can tell you right now, is not, like, huge on guys being, you know, the size of... I mean, they don't mind guys that big. I mean, people love Wardlow. Mm -hmm. They love Luchasaurus. They love a bunch of Cage, who just had, you know... a great performance last week yeeting Darby Allen all over the arena. Mm -hmm. Um so they they don't mind big guys, but I don't think size matters in that regard. I think they care more about the match quality and in that now granted, I think Moose versus Kenny Omega for the these fan bases, people will really like that match. It will be a great match. I mean Moose is a capable worker. We've known that for years now but swan he's like phoenix in that he fits omega's style better in that front also you could make the argument too i mean between moose and rich swan one guy was in wwe and one guy wasn't and that guy was rich swan mm -hmm. so more people are going to know him from that too so you could make the argument there i don't think it really matters at the end of the day I, I think I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing is that Omega is going to win the title and it really doesn't matter which guy it is as long as you just build them up correctly going into it. When you say that the size doesn't matter, I'm not going to say, and you make all your puns at home that, that's listening to this. It's not so <laughs> much that it matters more and or I'm not comparing it to WWE's thinking of size matters more than everything. I don't mean it that way. It's more that if you put Omega against Brian Cage, someone who's already promoted in the AEW crowd, mm. size is going to be a factor in how that match will work. That's going to be an element to how the match is built up. Yeah. Size is going to matter in the match with Moose. It'll be easier to tell that story because of the size difference. Uh, you compare that to 
well, actually, we'll bring up another AEW, Brian Cage and Darby Allen. They promoted mm. that with that uh, weigh-in the week before the match that took place. So we're going to see a lot of that sort of size being a factor in mm. building it up. It doesn't make it w- a better match, but it does become a factor well, in building the match. I will say, and I will say to your point here, it did make that Darby Cage match better because that match was all about Cage being Brock Lesnar to Darby Allen's John Cena. He threw that man around everywhere. Right. He bulldozed him. He ran him over. The only difference between this that match and Brock Cena was that unlike Cena, Darby got back up and he had to fight from underneath and he had to pretty much just scratch and claw his way to be able to win that match. Right. So, But it worked perfectly within the confines of that story. He had to overcome the bigger man. Well, the size difference was the story there. We're reviewing a match from two weeks ago. So reverting right. back to what we're talking about now with Hard to Kill and then obviously yeah. in, uh, involving AEW. So we don't know where the Impact title ch- picture is going to end up, but it looks right. like, like you said, Omega is going to end up taking on the champion and your money is on Omega winning the title, correct? Yeah, I, th- I mean, they... They didn't introduce that whole collector thing for no reason, I can't imagine. Unless, you know, the two promotions are just going to part ways, which doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, it seems like, if anything, they're strengthening the partnership. So it makes total sense for him to win that title. And again, I don't think it really matters which one he wins it off. Like, the big factor is going to be who beats him. Mm -hmm. That's the big factor in all of this, because the goal... Here, I think for every promotion, be it AEW, Impact, AAA, what, if, if Omega's going to win another title, maybe the NWA one, depending on how the relationship is there. Good the point. whole point of this is, our, is to make somebody mm. coming out of this. And I, I mean, you know, Impact has plenty of candidates there. You know, they can make Ace Austin. They can make Willie Mack. Um, I'm sure there's somebody I'm forgetting there. Oh, they have a lot of talent. There's no question of that. But if we return back to the AEW picture, they've been building slow burning again, Omega being upset by Hangman Adam Page. Yes, Hangman. I I definitely think that's the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that I've predicted with that angle has pretty much come to fruition there. So I, I anticipate that's the plan for later in the year. You know, Hangman, it looks like he's going to go with the Dark Order now, and they're going to make them into a bunch of sympathetic ragtag baby faces and such, which I, I think is going to work. And eventually you have him collide with Kenny, and he finally gets that big moment and becomes the champion. But if they choose not to do that for whatever reason, they have plenty of young people there that they can put over Omega and win the title. You could do Darby, you could do Sammy, you could do MJF. I mean, there's a bunch of other people I'm probably forgetting as well. Wardlow is a big one that's going to be talked about. Whoa, this is why this is why we make a great team because you remember stuff that I don't. Yeah, he would be a great candidate for that. That guy is a stud. You're really going to see, I think, a Batista push for uh, Wardlow down the line. Where yes, he's going to be the muscle. And not that he's going to be ignored the way Batista was ignored by Triple H in the Evolution days, but eventually he's going to be in the title picture, and it's going to be an immediate impact. Oh, the, the minute he's a challenger, the whole championship picture is going to change. Over if there. if they were if they're patient, and I and they are patient with a lot of things, and I hope oh, they are sure. here. You wait until MJF win. You keep him with MJF, and then you wait till MJF wins the title, and then you do the split, and he beats MJF to win the title oh that would be delicious as jonathan price in tomorrow never dies would say that would be That's awesome a james bond movie right yes okay. terrible movie terrible movie well michelle enough- yao's great in it though I will take your word for it. Yes. Um, Coming back to the impact and hard to kill. The other big Mm. aspect that we saw involving impact wrestling last night was that Taya Valkyrie has been written off the show and it looks like she's going to be a free agent or she might already be secretly in negotiation and signed with someone, but Mm. it seems like her time and impact is up. Yep. She was behind who shot Bravo all along. You hate to see it, man. Such a shame. Hate to see such a, someone you think you could trust is behind a conspiracy of 
of that nature there. Anyone who's seen Taya Valkyrie in her time in AAA and Lucha Underground yeah. and even her earlier career in Impact, she's a heel deep down inside, and that's the role she should have had the whole time. She, she is a pretty damn great heel. Yeah, so, is. all right, yes. Yeah, so I will point out, I didn't tell you this because I like to surprise you and such, but it. Tommy Dreamer had a joke after she was taken away by... It's supposed to be police, but it was guys in Impact Security shirts. So Impact Security arrested her. He was like, well, she's either going to the Jacksonville State Penitentiary or she's going to that prison in Stamford, Connecticut. And then I think it was uh, AC Romero was right there. He's like, man, I really hope she doesn't wind up in that Baltimore prison. <laughs> she's supposed to be the Ring of Honor. Yeah. Again. Okay. I mean, hey, they've done a lot of good things since coming back. The women's division, not one of those things, apparently. That could also be uh, not a political statement, but on the point, because Baltimore, not really known for a uh, well-policed and very high crime area. Anyone who's seen The Wire knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I figured you were referencing that right there. I did see Taya tonight. She responded to something with Hikaru Shida who, by the way, doesn't need an opponent now. So I don't know if that means anything right there. I have long thought, and I think you agreed with me on this, that she was going to go to WWE uh, because, you know, obviously Johnny Morrison. Mundo, John Morrison is there. Mm -hmm. um, they are married. I, I hope that's not a big shock to anyone listening to this. You're here. ruining kayfabe. I know. How how dare I? Um I thought he was married to the Miz. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, somebody check on Maurice. Does she know about that? Right I th I'm sure she's fine at having both of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hey, you, Johnny, Johnny is a very good looking man. So, I mean, that, that is true. Ty, Taya is a lucky woman and, and Johnny is a lucky man. It's a very attractive good looking couple, couple. good yes. looking wrestling couple. You're absolutely correct because yes. her husband is in WWE. You could see that obvious tie, but yeah. I never, I, I wouldn't agree that I think she's going there only because I think right now with the AEW women's division and really, I don't want to say on the rise, but in need of being on the rise, I think Tony Khan's going to shell out more hmm. money now than ever. And with all these impact contracts being up, apparently Jordan Grace's contract will be up at some point in 2021 as well. Really? I think, oh. I think it's going to be 50-50 uh, if I were to predict. I know WWE is going to offer these women a good deal, mm -hmm. but I think AEW is going to do the best they can to help bolster their women's division. And well, meaning they might spend more money than they would have last year. Well, you know, like you could look at it in several ways because the obviously – if you're looking at the strength of each division, especially when you throw NXT into the mix, it's right. closer with the main roster. But if you're comparing NXT to AEW, the NXT women's division is it's the best in the world at this way point. Ahead. Yeah, it's it's the best non-Japanese promotion. Yeah, it's women's not stardom. Division Other than yeah. stardom, yeah. It's it's not Tokyo Joshi Pro or Stardom. That's right. basically it. Um you know, otherwise it's the best. So yeah, from that standpoint, you're looking at, you know, probably higher caliber matches or at least higher caliber storylines and such. If you go there on the other hand, as we've seen, there's also not a lot of room. Mm -hmm. And we know that because Deanna Perrazzo was there and is now gone and then had to go to impact and has now become a star. Ty Conti, there was no room for her there. She's now gone to AEW and she's now improved at a rapid rate just by getting TV reps. Mm -hmm. Serena Deeb was not uh, could have been on TV if they had decided not to make her a coach and whatnot. She leaves, she goes to AEW and she's killing it there. So the opportunity is bigger there in AEW and the division ever since um ever since the last pay-per-view is definitely improved greatly because you know that i mean the uh the beach break show is built around you know penelope ford's wedding right you know key member of the women's division and right that and right now thunder rosa versus Britt baker that's the marquee match on that show so they clearly got in the message and they're clearly figuring things out it's still not perfect still things that could be done better but that goes for every promotion oh, there. i mean 
WWE doesn't do the women's division perfectly all the time either. So, oh, and exceeds um, division. Could, it, there's criticism that can be laid out. Hmm. Definitely. Uh, that's why I say it's 50 50. If you're thinking long term, and this is the thing we got to keep hmm. in mind with Taya Valkyrie, she's, I think, in her mid 30s right now. 37. 37. Think, so, yeah. late 30s. We don't know if she plans on having a child anytime soon, or if at all, we don't know. Mm. Uh, and that could be a factor. She might decide that's what I want to do with my time. And right. that means her career might be over because it'll probably be hard for her to get back in the ring at 39, 40 years old mm. or whatever the case is. Or she might decide that's not her lifestyle. She wants to wrestle until her body can't keep up with it. Either way, she's late in her career. So do you want to go to bolster a division that's on the rise? You definitely make a name for yourself in AEW, or do you want to go with a more automatic name value in WWE? But as we know, there's a lot of negatives to joining WWE, not just because of the packed mm -hmm. NXT roster, but the main roster booking questionable at best for anyone right. not in the four horsewomen. Yeah, I don't know. In NXT, she would do a good job eventually, I think. Eventually, for they sure. would find a way. On the main roster, I don't I know where it's fine, but she'll get lost. Take a look at the fact that you mentioned Serena Deeb, but another uh, maybe legend, more legendary in my opinion than Serena Deeb, M Mickey, Mickey James, James is Mickey just James. lost in, in there. I don't know if there's an injury involved, but she was part of the, uh, the Legends Night. And people were wondering, is she retired? And she had to come out and Twitter say, no, she's just not being used right now. And she's a great worker. She might not be who she was when she was taking on uh, mm -hmm. Trish Stratus at WrestleMania 22, but she's still very good. You compare her to someone like Carmella, I think I would expect a better match out of Mickey James than Carmella at this day and age. They've always kind of undervalued Mickey James, though. Pretty so, much. I mean, like, yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me that they're doing the same now. I, I mean... It really could see, you know, it really comes down to, I think the, it really comes down to how much Mundo being in WWE matters there, because if it comes down to her, how she's going to be used, I mean, let's be real. She could walk into AEW and be on the next pay-per-view challenging Sheeta for the title. For sure. And you could make the strong argument. She could win that match. And such because at the she same time, though, she could walk on to the Royal Rumble and win that match, or at least be in a high well, she would be, for WrestleMania. She, would, she could walk into the Rumble and have a good performance there, or yeah. something. Yes, that's definitely true. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I still would lean more towards WWE, but I could see it going either way. I mean, you have to remember too. She's a Lucha Underground alumnus and AEW's crawl, you know. Yeah. She's very close with Phoenix and Pentagon. And the know. ties with AAA. Yeah, and yeah, and she would be allowed if she wanted to. She could return to Impact eventually, could be released from prison, come back. <laughs> um, she could continue to do uh, AAA. She's still the AAA women's champion. That's right. You know, so she could still do that. I don't know. It, it'll be, um, it'll it's be, gonna be inter interesting no matter what is going to happen. Yeah. Staying with the impact women. We also saw recently that they crowned their first ever women's tag team champions with mm. uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles. And one of the first things they did is they went on social media and called out the <laughs> AEW women's division. So well, a lot of movement. That's, in that's, uh, that's interesting because Kiara Hogan is the uh, significant other of Diamante. Oh, okay. Yes, that's that's why they're trying to set up Diamante and Ivelisse versus Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles, awesome. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Anything that's building up these divisions in either row. Honestly, Impact's done really well with their division. They've mm. kind of innovated. A lot of Impact fans have long said WWE wouldn't be having a women's evolution if it wasn't for oh. the knockouts 10 oh. years earlier. Totally. Ga Gail Kim. Yeah. You know, like if Gail Kim had done the stuff she did in Impact in WWE, there would be statues of her. Yeah. Somewhere. Like, and while this is not diminishing Gail Kim in any way, mm -hmm. WWE had other talents just as good as Gail Kim at the time. Sure. And ignored her, the, her them just as much they, as they ignored they her. They had Gail Kim too. They had several Gail Kim. Times. Yeah. Beth Phoenix is an amazing worker and she mm -hmm. got, got away from mm -hmm. WWE and she got fed up. 
she's still in the fold, obviously, but yeah. it wasn't her passion anymore. So unfortunately, that's always going to be the case with WWE. They're always improving. Their women's division is still very strong, but it is based mm-hmm. on the same, oh, yeah. well, Alexa Bliss and Asuka. We'll say same six women at all times. Yes. Alex- Alexa Bliss is the Jeff Jarrett in the 97 horsemen of the group. I really wouldn't make that comparison because when it comes <laughs> to, if we want to move into Raw quickly, mm. Alexa Bliss has been out of all six of those women that we just mentioned, other than Becky Lynch as the man, she has the strongest character out of all of them. Definitely mm. the weakest in the ring out of all of these women. Mm-hmm. But yes. Very good with the character work. One of the better promos in the women's division. And while there's a lot of questionable aspects to this tie-in with the feed, uh, the fiend, I should say. Yes. She's been very good in her segments. You can never say she's she's not making this work. She makes everything work. It just tends to be cheap and lame because of WWE writing and special effects more than anything. Yeah. So is this a segue into this main event here? Sure. Yeah. Let's move into that. So we saw the raw main event where she took on Oscar. Oscar was they set it up by having an Alexa's playground segment earlier in the show. I don't want to spend too much with the recap, but the important yeah. aspects was psychological warfare using yep. the, some of the same tactics that we've seen the fiend. She got into Oscar's head. Oscar seemed afraid of Alexa. And then Alexa won with the, uh, with a couple of special effects. They changed the lighting and she had different uh, clothes mm-hmm. and makeup on over. Uh, I want to say like within the snap, it was all special effects. I love when, WWE takes advantage of pre-taping. That's something that I think all promotions should do more often, What not in the cinematic match style, but you can do something like her changing into different makeup and clothing and make it work in the story if you can. Mm-hmm. She did that. She won with the Fiend's finisher, and now she's got the psychological warfare against the Raw Women's Division champion, which has been the most... Asuka's been the most dominant woman in WWE other than Charlotte over the last five years. So Mm. getting the advantage of her in a credible way, building up Alexa's character and possibly creating the next feud for the title. I thought it was a masterful segment, but the match quality (laughs) was low because Alexa is not the best worker. No. And it has a lot of questionable elements. Anyone who does not turn into the goofy side of wrestling definitely would have been turned off by that segment. And I'm assuming that's exactly what you want to jump on. Uh, I'm let me put it this way. Your praise right there. Actually, not in, in fairness, there were two people on cage match as well who liked this match. So those two guys and you are the only three people I know in this wide world that thought this was well done. Everybody else I know thought that this was one of the worst things in the history of Raw. <laughs> this, I, I really don't see it that way. Now, uh, of and, all and, the women's segment recently, I would have said last week's SmackDown Bailey talk show. She did the ding ding hello or whatever. I don't. I can't remember. She held had her own Piper's Pit event uh, essentially, and it was terrible. Oh, uh, the Alexis Playground segment was kind of weak, but the match very good. Yeah, people people were not feeling that. I think. The fit, it's the fiend stuff, which this is obviously connected to. People are are done with this. Understand. People are done with this. They're done with her as a result. Alexa's a polarizing figure on her normal days, anyway, right? Because as you just pointed out, she is not the strongest worker no. there. And a lot, and again, you know, obviously there people are still trying to get the casual fans and such these days. But we're really down to the hardcores as the most consistent audience. And you know what the hardcores primarily want. They want good work. Well, they they do love that too. Mm-hmm. But they they want good work rate. They want good matches, great matches, even because you can, as you point out all the time, you can find a good match stumbling onto the wrong YouTube page. Absolutely. Um, you know, they want that. They want stuff that they feel makes sense. And and this feed stuff, I mean, this feed stuff probably jumped the shark back at that Hell in a Cell thing a year ago. Oh, great. It's still going long after its expiration date. Um, Other than like a few select people, most people are not enjoying it. And now, and and the, the big thing I heard about this one 
was people saying this remind uh, Oscar reminded me a lot of how Seth Rollins looked on the build up to that Hell in a Cell thing, and as you recall, people hated that, and oh. a lot of a lot because remember Seth was crying in the corner. That famous gif of the lights flickering red and black and Seth's in the corner. He's going, ah, ah, ah. I remember something. I It's not even a joke that I've erased it from my memory. There's so <laughs> much wrestling that I just don't remember it. Yeah, it's my curse. I remember all the funny bad stuff. So I remember the bad match being terrible. I remember the big yeah. giant mallet in the uh, cage, the the cell. Uh, it's really yeah. all I remember from that. I'm Goodness. We'll be on our deathbeds and we'll be like, oh, fuck, I remember that thing. That was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. So um, I'll understand people that have reservations about it due to that aspect. And the, the way you phrased it, jump the shark, entirely accurate. It's very I think, hard. I think that it's it's also the fact that it involves Asuka. I mean, you bring up she's one of the most dominant stars of the last several years. And in some case, and in some instances, that's true. But remember, I brought this up a week ago. She has not defended that title since September. Right. This is, and she she got Becky Lynch handed her the belt, as I recall, right? When she was sort pregnant. Of. She won the money yeah. in the bank. Oh, yeah. She won the money in the bank. And then instead of her cashing in, Becky was just like, You won that match, so you're pretty much the champion. Right. And such. And she's been champion since. And if you really think about this reign, she had some matches with Sasha that people thought were good but a lot of the finishes were awful. So it kind of left a bad taste in people's mouths. Okay. And then she was involved in that Lana thing that went on forever and ever and, and ever and had no payoff. And now we come to this and now they're, it looks like they're going to put Alexa over and Alexa is doing this bizarre fiend thing. And Oscar's reign has kind of been, disappointing to people i think some of the reaction here is because oh my goodness they're doing this to her again because it oscar has had moments where she's looked great mm -hmm. and she's had moments where people have wondered what the hell are they doing with her which is in fairness that's pretty much everybody but you know in the sense, I think this is one of those internets complaining too much and just i don't want to say overthinking because wwe underthinks most of the time but in this case, she's had a very dominant run. She's been at the top of the card. She doesn't need to beat everybody to be there. She's beaten the most mm. important people, Sasha and Bailey over the summer. And then on the Raw roster, mm. the big competition right now is the return of Charlotte. But she's been um, very dominant of Nia Jax and Shayna, who are the top two heels of the roster mm. until Charlotte showed up. I, I do have to point out, too, we love to point out all these teams that are breaking up, up and from what i understand there's even more that are doing that now though they at least had tension from the beginning they didn't want to be a mm. team from step one yeah but they're they're also breaking cedric up from the hurt business and i believe there's uh they i i from what i understand they're already breaking up elias and gunner there's tension there i don't know if it's a breakup but it could go that way yeah uh, I do agree that that's what's happening with the Hurt business, but this is actually one of the better ones because, in at least in my opinion, the mm -hmm. idea of Cedric being the, uh, he's not a rookie, but he's rookie mm -hmm. compared to everyone else in the Hurt business, and he's yeah. gung-ho to do it his way, and they're trying to say, no, 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 do it this way. Mm -hmm. And they're butting heads on that. It's pretty intriguing. Yeah, but the, but the problem is, as we've talked about before, if they do that, up. he's, if they break, if they break, that group up if if he's left out and he goes against them he's done the moment that feud is over well Vince, that's why i think yeah. it's going to go the other way i think they're going to eventually side with him and it's shelton that's going to end up being pushed out well that would definitely be the best idea right now because of the two of them no offense to shelton he is the 45 soon to be 46 year old man of the group mm -hmm. cedric is in his i believe his early 30s Cedric's and he's been the, great. His 2020 has been amazing. Man, he's a very good worker too. Yeah. So yeah, he he was one of those guys that for a while it's like, what the hell are they doing? Right. And and he was openly wondering what the hell they were doing. And then they finally put him in this group. And you know, but That's yeah, as as we talked about, the hurt business is one of the the lone beacons of light. In and Raw, so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And another thing that Coach brought up that really gives it credibility is they're the most 
adult acting act on raw like they <laughs> act like they're actual adult competitors everyone else is not not everyone else but most other people you just brought up oscar and people complaining about that her cowering to alexa i'm not saying it's a great idea but it's definitely okay but it's not with her character oscar would mm -hmm. not be afraid of anyone and shouldn't yes. be afraid of anyone and i think that's a big problem people had there. which yeah. i understand and yeah. that's why I think the way they're going, again, maybe I'm being hopeful, I think Asuka's mm -hmm. going to be bringing up more of a Kana background, back from her Japan days, where she has a bit more of a mysticism side to it. We'll oh, see well, if that happens. Oh, again. man. Don't don't let me remind... We're, we're going to bring up the Luke Harper thing again here. No need. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's just that that's something that people have brought up, mm. and I could see it going in that direction. You would You would hope they would do that. You would hope they would do that. I think there's a lot more money in Asuka defending the title at WrestleMania over whatever plan they do have than Alexa, even with the Fiend uh, inspiration. Mm. I think Alexa is going to be a credible challenger but, at the Rumble, but she's not going to get the win. The right thing to do here would be what AEW did with Hikaru Shida and Abaddon, because with that, they, had, they allowed Shida to show fear against Abaddon, but the whole point of it was she overcame it and then beat her. Right. And, and such in the face of that end up being. Well, I, let's hope so, because if not, uh, you're, there's going to be a lot of angry people out there. There are angry people that will tune in the next Monday, so I don't give a shit that, what they say. That That is true. They yeah. definitely will do that. <laughs> like I said, the internet loves to complain, but they don't stop watching. Mm. Yourself ac excluded. You stopped watching when you felt yourself complaining more than ever. That, that's true. I did. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm the unicorn of the group. Coming back to Raw, the other aspect, or I should say WWE overall that I wanted to discuss is WWE announced that officially WrestleMania is going to take place in the Tampa uh, stadium, not arena, that yep. WrestleMania was supposed to take place in last year, and it apparently is going to have a live attendance. That is pretty huge news. Now, just to give you perspective, and I'll mm -hmm. ask you to do the same thing for what it's like in Rhode Island, but here in Ontario, we are in an area, or in our whole province it's a lockdown. It's not exactly a curfew. Quebec right now has a curfew where people are not allowed out past eight o'clock unless they're walking their dogs within one kilometer of where their ID says they live. It's mm -hmm. very restrictive. Ontario, it's the same thing, essentially 24 seven, but the cops aren't allowed to pull you over and ask you what you're doing out. But if they happen to have a reason to pull you over or ask what you're doing, they will ask, why are you out of your home at this time? Mm -hmm. So it's very restrictive. I go on Facebook the other day and I'm seeing that in New Jersey, there's stand up comedy taking place. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite com comedians these days, Andrew Schultz, if it matters, he's doing a show and everyone's social distancing in the crowd. They have masks on. But to me, that was foreign. Wow, people are able to go and do stand up comedy and go attend stand up comedy as an <laughs> audience. And then you go to the idea that in Florida, which I know is controversial even in the states mm -hmm. they're yep. gonna have a live attendance for wrestlemania now we brought up just before we went on the air that aew has had a live attendance at daily's place for quite yes. a while but it's very sparse it's yes. very spread out mm -hmm. and it's nowhere near the size of a full arena or i should even right. say a stadium like this place is going to be what is that attendance going to be because apparently you were saying that in florida they're allowed 100 percent capacity if they wish uh, I'm not entirely sure on that, but I believe yes, if they want to, because I mean, I'm not, again, I need to look that up, but right. the Florida governor, and I'm going to try to put this as kindly as I possibly can is a whack job. Yeah. He's, he's, out there. <laughs> he's an, he's out of his mind. He is a moron. He is an idiot. And on that note, let's move on. So the point is, uh, you know, based on what I can remember, yeah, if they want to, they can have, you know, like the NFL teams down there can have as many people as they want. Now, the Dolphins, the Buccaneers, which is where the, the stadium that's going to host WrestleMania, the Jaguars, obviously the AEW owners as well there, have not had full capacity crowds. They've right. been doing, you know, six to 9,000, I think is a good estimate, maybe a little less maybe a little more. I don't know the exact figures. That's what you would hope for here. You know, because obviously we were talking about this before the show, Vince doing full attendance in April. And obviously April's a few months away. It's April 11th. 
April 11th and the 12th, right? Because it's going to be two nights. Yeah, that's Two correct. night WrestleMania. So we're still several months away. Who knows what it's going to be like then? Maybe the new, the Biden administration will make things better here in the U.S. I certainly hope so. It I think can't everyone get, hopes so. Not Maybe yeah. not everyone expects so, but I hope but everyone hopes so. It can't get any worse than it is. That's for uh, sure. Don't say that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Knock, knock on couch. Um, you know, maybe it'll get better there. Maybe the vaccine, vaccine will be distributed more. So maybe there will be better. You know, I had suggested this when I was talking to someone about the Super Bowl, okay. you know, because obviously a lot of the people getting it first are going to be the medical personnel and such. A nice gesture would be maybe to have those people be in attendance for the show there and such. So you have fans and everything. Maybe you do something like that, you know, with, a smaller crowd. I'm not really sure. I just think as of right now, the best bet is to do six to 9,000 people and at least have people in there. If Vince goes for a full sellout. Nuts. Oh, you know how people are going to react to that one. And they're going to be right to react badly it's gonna on be, that one. I, I don't want to say there's one right way or the other, because I see the benefits of the Ontario or a Canadian lockdown, but I also see the benefits of having a bit more freedom I don't know what the right answer is. And I don't think anyone really knows what the right answer is. Uh, I was debating with someone recently how, uh, well, they didn't, th this wasn't a debate, but in Ontario, uh, overdoses and suicides, very sad hmm. thing. They are higher. I know a lot of we people. Talk, we talked about that on this show. Yeah. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, you know, dis dispute that and say, no, that's just something Trump supporters wanted to say that to encourage not doing lockdowns. And I understand if it comes from Trump's mouth, I would give it, dubious credibility yeah. and, I understand. and in the states they did try to pull that here I, I, and i get that but unfortunately in a lot of areas japan and canada it is accurate so unfortunately i think these are things we're getting really off track from wrestling but right either way i don't know what the right answer is and when it comes to vince mcmahon making this decision i hope he goes to like kind of both aspects of it i think your idea mm -hmm. of about five to ten maybe fifteen thousand yeah. Over two nights. That's the thing I was trying to indicate. Right. He can double his attendance by doing this over two nights. And if mm. it is only fifteen to 20,000, I already raised the number. So from five to 15, we'll say. Yeah. That becomes 10 to 30 over the course of two nights. And the benefit of doing it that a lot of people forget is that a big expense for setting up these shows is setting it up and mm -hmm. then tearing it down for just one show. Yeah. Well, they're going to set it up then they're going to have two shows and then tear it down. So you're kind of saving money by doing mm. it that way. Also doing, if you're doing it two nights, having a lesser crowd is probably better because the way WWE sometimes struggles, I have a hard time believing that 80,000 people would be like, yeah, we're going to do this two nights in a oh, row. Yeah, that's fair yeah. too. Yeah, so yeah. having it be a smaller crowd where people could pick and choose. All right. I'd rather go to night two than night one. And so like, you know, that I think that would work better. And, and you know, new Japan just did this with wrestle kingdom where they exactly. had, I believe 10,000, the first night, 5,000, the second night worked great. Yep. Worked great. So I'm hoping WWE pulls it off when mm -hmm. you were kind of talking about if they were to do full capacity, the pushback, the, I think it would yeah. be a PR nightmare for WWE. Oh yes. Oh yes. And, and, and rightfully so, too. Yeah, that would be insane. It'd be it would, insane for anybody to do that. Definitely. Uh, yeah. It'd be very problematic. I, I don't want to say it'd be right or wrong or if it would be... Uh, either way, the pushback would be way too much, and I think it would be to the deficit to WWE. They, it would not right. work out in their favor. Right. Although, although, in fairness, as you just pointed out, you know, about the people complaining... Every, people would, for the most part, still watch anyway. They I will, can't. but that's that's not the pushback that they should be worried about. It was more like when we talked about a few months back, the mm -hmm. unions being pushed back on uh, because of Zelina Vega's issue. Oh, you think she left. you think the wrestlers would push back? It's not so much the wrestlers; it's the outside, the wrestling fandom. Not even uh, uh, it's more the mainstream media that, picking it up. And that is, you know, because there is a new administration. Now, I, I mean, I don't know if Andrew Yang remembers or not, but the the existential threat is out there if mm -hmm. they that card wants to be played. So yeah, they do need to be uh, they do need to be careful in that regard. I know you. So before the show, you suggested, and this would be a good segue in yeah. to this now. Um, 
Was it Coach who brought it up to you that suggested uh, they do it in Saudi Arabia? I, he didn't suggest it. He just brought okay. it up as, what if they did WrestleMania in Saudi Arabia? And he was <laughs> asking our group of wrestling fans, would you still tune in? <laughs> and to me, it became more of an interesting discussion that will they go back to Saudi Arabia soon? Whether it's WrestleMania or a super showdown in July yeah. or whatever the case is, the reason why that got brought up is they've really – done a good job covering their COVID butts in Saudi Arabia. They don't have the mm -hmm. issue that they have in Canada or the States, and they do have full attendance for these shows. That's why UFC starting their uh, fight Island again in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. and they're allowing attendance in these arenas. I don't oh, know if they're those... The next lucky. fight is uh, McGregor's making his yeah. return. I those... do believe that's the first show with live Those attendance. lucky people got to see Max Holloway, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Any UFC fans uh, in the audience? You got some UFC fans here uh, talking as well. That guy was so good; he was talking to to his corner and still owning the man at the same time. And Qatar is no bum. That guy is a top ten contender, but mm. Holloway is just on another level. I don't like the guy, but the guy is as an athlete, well, it's un incredible. A lot, a lot of people were loving him Saturday. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But sticking with wrestling and mm. Saudi Arabia. Obviously, WWE still has ties with them. I don't know how well it's going since there was the concern that they didn't get paid for one of the shows or a couple of the shows. But if they can get a full attendance by going to Saudi Arabia, would WWE do that? The concern mm -hmm. I brought up at that point wasn't so much the PR pushback and the Twitter revenge, so much so that how many of the WWE roster would be willing to go? <laughs> They've been so dependent on these part-time guys to sell matches. I don't know how many full-time people, especially to build up a show like a WrestleMania, mm -hmm. would still be willing to go to Saudi, Saudi Arabia in general and during a pandemic. First off, WWE would absolutely do that move. I have oh, no sure. doubts about that. Um, it would be an awful move. It would, from a fan standpoint, it would, oh my goodness, people would be irate. That actually might get some people to not watch. Oh, that, yeah. would, that would actually be, because that's been proven. When they went there after that journalist was executed and such, people did legit stop watching yeah. after that. You they know, I, mean, the, I can't remember how many, but there was a mm, significant percentage of subscribers yeah. that canceled their subscription. Mm, yeah. I mean, we do like to joke about how people still keep watching and stuff. And in a lot of regards, that's true. But in a lot of regards, some people have literally stepped yeah. away. That Saudi Arabia has been one of the mm. biggest points of contention where people did say, nope, right. I'm voting yeah, and so I'm turning this off. You have that issue right there. Cause especially now after that plane ride fiasco mm -hmm. too, and all, that and then you have to consider this too and you know a lot of people aren't going to think about this you're probably eliminating a lot of the big women's matches you would have to do there because they're not i mean i know they're allowing those now but it's one match exactly one they're not gonna allow that many more no they're not gonna allow much to and, and plus you're opening the door because i know for a few of the women's matches they've done there the crowd has reacted I don't want to say badly, but there's been moments where I think something was thrown at somebody. Oh, I didn't. Or, catch that. you know, I could be mistaken there. I, I'm not I don't remember entirely just to preface that. But I do know that the, some of the matches have been met with silence and such. It's a slippery slope. It's a tricky issue. Mm -hmm. They're given the politics over there, which are ass questionable backwards, to yeah. be quite honestly. Um, Agreed. So, yeah, you're potentially eliminating some of your bigger matches there, you know, with your because some of their biggest stars are women these days. Well, so, you take a look at the last WrestleMania that headlined with an attendance. It was headlined by the women with the, the three-person mm. uh, triple threat. And I don't know if it would have headlined anything had they done WrestleMania 36 last year, but still the Charlotte... Rhea match was still a big selling point. And then obviously um, Shayna taking on Becky was a big one. There's no way both of those matches would have taken place had it been in Saudi No, Arabia. no. There's no way a women's tag match takes place on that show. And I don't yeah. even know if they'd be allowed to work the same way. They There might be rules that say, yeah, they can right, wrestle, right. but they're, not, they're right. not allowed to leave the ring. They're not allowed to use weapons. They're not allowed to do this or that. They're obviously not allowed to wear the attire they want to wear. Yeah, and I don't know if that's such a huge deal, but it might also be 
uh, more psychological. If I'm not wearing, you know, there's been days I've, I've gone to work and they say, you got to dress up in a suit today. And mm -hmm. I'm not myself because I'm just, I'm in my head. I'm in a suit. I'm right. not comfortable. So if these women are working and they're, I'm in this t-shirt and I got to make sure my boob doesn't pop out, they're not going to mm -hmm. be working the same way that they normally exactly. would. Yeah. So I think not only is there the normal negatives of going to Saudi Arabia, but there's even more negatives yeah. for them to go in 2020. It's, ju it's just a terrible idea. Terrible idea. It is definitely something, though, if Vince was offered it, I, I would be afraid that he would do it. And, of course, then, you know, the other problem is that it would then be made up largely of part-time guys. You know, yeah. Brock would be coming back in. I'm sure they would maybe try to convince The Undertaker – I know he's retired. Vince would be like, hey, I'll owe you one, pal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's you know? a so very sad state of affairs. Now, mm. you brought up Brock Lesnar. I was actually going to get ready mm. to sign off or move into what's happening tonight's rest, uh, Wednesday shows, but real mm -hmm. quickly, it looks like the possibility is there. MVP has been pushing for Bobby Lashley to get a la uh, match against Lesnar at WrestleMania. And Lashley has been one of the people that's been very well protected on Raw. Ever since he lost to oh. Drew McIntyre, I think in spring of last year, I don't think he's lost a match cleanly. He won the U.S. title. He's been dominant. He's beaten Riddle. There might be a feud going on. Didn't, with didn't, didn't Riddle get a fluke win over him or something? He got Yeah, but it was... Uh, like a roll up and it was with a referee bump and a bunch of oh. other stuff. So it wasn't clean in any way. Right. Okay. But to be fair, Lashley hasn't beaten Riddle clean in his revenge mm. either. So the room is still there for them to have another match and it would be a bigger one. And maybe Riddle will take the U S title. And you but... know, Bobby's wanted that match for years. Exactly. Man. And I was thinking, while I never thought of it as a huge enough match to push, especially because Lashley, he's a great talent, but mm. he's not really a big star in WWE. I don't know if that's really worth bringing Brock back. Mm -hmm. He's been so well protected. We, do, I don't think anyone yeah, really yeah. wants Bro uh, Brock to be back in a title picture. <laughs> no, no. No. Whether you're talking about online fans or fans of in casual nature, we already saw him take on everyone that's involved in the title right. picture right now. So it's kind of a boring idea. Bobby Lashley, on the other hand, would be a fresh idea. And there would be a storyline that they could book mm -hmm. about the MMA backgrounds, the size of these two animals. And I think that now would be the best time to pull it off. The fact that you bring up the, the most important thing you bring up here is that how much he's been protected and it we've brought this up before. It doesn't seem likely he's being protected for the title because they did that already mm -hmm. and they don't like to go back to that for, they don't like to do rematches at WrestleMania. No. So if he's not being protected for that, what's he being protected for? Brock Lesnar is something that you could be doing that for right there. So that does makes sense i mean yes it's not the sexiest thing brock could do but brock's pretty much at this point I'm, Bra that's my sexy dance. <laughs> yeah at this point brock has like the only people brock can really wrestle is guys who aren't big stars it's not like drew was a big star at the time no. when they wrestled last year either so he's pretty much down to wrestling guys he's never worked before mm -hmm. so you might as well just do him and lashley if you're gonna bring brock in now i haven't heard anything about brock coming in no and such as far as i know of he's up in canada you know shooting at moose probably waiting for dana tony khan and vince to all call him at the same time so he can raise the price to astronomical <laughs> values and such but I also don't. What does Paul Heyman do then? Does he bounce across brands? Uh, sure what does they he would do? Have that happen. Well, Heyman's been so good at any time he's been on TV yeah. that, yeah, they'll mm. have him. And it's oh, not God. like he has to travel to different arenas. Everything's taking place in the Thunderdome right you, now. You know what the worst thing would be? Vince would be then be like, oh, I got to do Brock and Roman again. No, the why do you have to ruin my show? The, God. the Heyman, the Heyman dynamic now. It's so different. I got to now do it again. And everybody is. Just could be like uh, Jack Sparrow, the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Please, no. All these movie references that I'm sure most people get, but <laughs> go right over my head. I haven't watched a Jack Sparrow movie. Mm -hmm. The last Johnny Depp movie I saw was Nightmare on Elm Street number one. Oh, that's a, that's a long time ago. Yeah. And well, I've definitely seen movies of his since. I just, just be fortunate. I watched Paris, Texas last night. I haven't referenced that at all yet. 
That's the comedy, right? With uh, no, that's that's Happy Texas. Oh, all right, sorry. And Steve Paris, Texas is Harry Dean Stanton, Dean Stockwell, and Natasha Kinski. Sounds amazing, but I do like Harry. Oh, it's Dean's. great! It's He's great. Good. He's okay. awesome. Now, Legend. quickly before we tie into mm-hmm. what's happening tonight on the Wednesday Night War, I gotta say something. Last mm-hmm. week, cult icon Eric Mutter was correct, and I was wrong. Oh no! We Second to, time. That's we uh, were discussing the SmackDown title picture and mm-hmm. Royal Rumble. They had booked at the time Adam Pearce against Roman Reigns, and you. It was just an aside comment. You didn't make a prediction. You're just saying, you know what? That's an angle I think they're going to change. And I said, no, no, I think they're going to stick with it. Once again, I was wrong. You were correct. <laughs> we are now seeing Roman Reigns take on uh, Kevin Owens in a last man standing match. It was pretty well done. I'm not excited for a third loss for Kevin Owens, but no. it's still going to be a solid match. And uh, I, I love the Royal Rumble, so I'm excited. Well, yeah, well, the Royal Rumble will be, you know, the Royal Rumble, unless, you know, they Vince is like, how can I make it more like 2014 and 15 again? Then it, it, we got a problem, but barring that, it should be okay. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. It like, I mean, Adam Pierce was a really good worker on the indies and such, and I think they probably could have found a way to make it work, but it just didn't make any sense. They needed to finish up the Kevin Owens thing. I'm going to guess they're going to do something at the chamber with Nakamura because it seems like WWE is trying to do a thing where Nakamura is like Kofi Kingston from a few years ago, where he's having these great performances and everybody's behind him to get a push. When in reality, it just kind of seems like Nakamura is doing the same thing he always does. And people are like, well, it'd be fine, but I don't really care all that much (laughs) and such. Which is good for the February show on the road Mm. to WrestleMania. Right. It's either that or he Roman's going to defend it against 13 people in the chamber or something. (laughs) Um, So Uh, when now we're talking about Royal Rumble, what was the year? Yeah, 2016 was when AJ Styles... Uh, made his debut and Ro- mm-hmm. the Roman Reigns was defending the title in the Rumble. Yes, won by Triple H. <sighs> yeah, in a booking decision that people were like, "Oh man," but then they were like, "Well, last year was 2015, and this was better than that, so I'm okay with it." I don't even know if it was better. The booking was better, but the match itself, I don't think was. But I they were way. they were in the throes of. We got to push Roman at all costs. Damn everything else. It was so, pretty questionable at best. Mm. And Speaking, then five, five years later, Vince was finally like, hey, I know how to do this now. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he really knows what I had to do this. Yeah. Speaking of Triple H, his main project is NXT. And tonight he's got a not so stacked show, but mm. they have booked a couple of things. They've been pushing the fight pit for, uh, they were supposed to do that at New Year's Evil. Yeah, uh, it sounds like for kayfabe reasons they pretended to have uh, an right. injury and they've delayed it to this week. So we are going to finally get that fight pit along with a couple more of the dusty classic tag matches. They're going to have Ugh. the first women's uh, tag matches. It looks like it's Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter taking on the team of Mercedes, Mar- uh, Mercedes uh, Martinez and Tony Storm. Oh wow! Yeah, what a. One team there is better than the other, and I'll give you a hint which one it is. Definitely. I don't think anyone will <laughs> question that. They've just been pushing Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter. Not, I just shouldn't say pushing, like they're giving them a push, but they've been an NXT homegrown team, and they've been putting some energy towards that. Well, so it's entirely possible they'd give them the fluke win, but I know what you're saying, K- and I agree. Caden is, in fact, not homegrown. That Caden Carter is Lacey Lane who was a Lucha Libre star for the crash before she came to WWE. So if they're trying to, to pass her off there, I call bullshit. I'm on to you, Hunter. I don't mean homegrown as in they just built her out of clay Mm. from the performance center. They just mean it's a a product that hasn't been in North America. It has been built up in NXT Mm. and now their team is very genuine and brand new. Right. Well, yeah, Casey, Casey is definitely more of the, you know, one of the PC people there, right? Because I don't believe she had any experience. No, no experience before that. Yeah. But I was under, even aware she was on TV. The last I heard from her, her and Ricochet were hosting maskless parties and restaurants and such. 
she's well i know you don't follow nxt but the way mm. they've been booking it is they'll give these people uh an appearance once a month or so just to make sure nobody forgets them give them a win give them mm. a loss the, but they gave them promo time in the, over the last two weeks to get them built up for the tournament so that's why yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if they get the win but i agree with you i'm predicting that uh, tony storm and Mar martinez they're gonna be crashing over them speaking right. of who's gonna be squashed uh in the men's tag tournament <laughs> your favorite the lucha house party uh they're gonna take on imperium pour pour one out for grand metal league man yeah they're, didn't they're... he lose last night to bobby lashley i can't remember who lost the no no it, they it was a six-man tag yeah. or something on raw on monday night yeah but wasn't he the one that submitted to lashley i honestly can't remember let's just go with it it Probably. helps my gimmick here you know there you go helps my gimmick out and then another team that you would love, Johnny Gargano. Oh, he's going to team way, with the, the way, the way, exactly. The and most it. perfect name for a team with Johnny Gargano in it. <laughs> so Johnny Gargano is teaming up with another one of your favorites, Austin Theory. Yep. Who has no controversy in his background whatsoever. Mm, yeah. Uh, and he's going to take on Kushida and Leon Ruff. What a team there too. We. We need to talk about this Dusty Classic thing because we, we both agree, you know, and it's especially glaring because when you compare it to AEW, the tag team promotion, as it were, NXT, ta their tag division, not so good. And they're doing this tournament and the ratings came back and obviously there's stuff going on in the U.S. that affected the ratings to some degree. But the first week of the Dusty Classic was just destroyed in the ratings like adam cole in the main event i forget who he teamed with roderick strong right right who'd they go against uh someone oh, who i'd prefer oh oh brizongo Fon fondango and tyler breeze yeah that drew about uh 490 some thousand viewers right okay. there aew nearly their demo nearly beat that oof like that just goes to show you how weak their They've done this tag team thing. They're doing uh, this. I wouldn't say that's reflecting the tag division. I think it's more reflecting AEW has done such a superior job promoting uh, shows. Okay. NXT, we didn't know it was going to be uh, the Indisputed Era against Brizongo unless you were, well, look, Twitter's a pretty big medium, I guess, but they, we that's how it was. Yeah, announced. yeah, but, but twi Twitter with TV ratings, that doesn't correlate, really. No, not at all. Exactly. Yeah. So. In my opinion, it's more reflecting how NXT did not promote a very good show. Right. Uh, execution, it was fine. It was a solid show. I enjoyed it, but mm. there was nothing special. There was no big drawing match. There was nothing that was, oh, I can't wait to tune in. Unlike right. this week with the fight pit. I'm very excited to see that. Right, I think right, the ratings right. yeah. will be a bit better. Not that I care about that, but yeah. I think that'll be an aspect. Yeah, well, we, I mean, goodness, you hope that for these two shows, the ratings go up, but like, tomorrow's inauguration day and such like the political world has just killed these two shows the last few weeks and rightfully so big things did happen absolutely you know we, we had an insurrection by a bunch of morons and terrorists and then we had an impeachment last week because of the incitement of those terroristic morons and mm -hmm. such and now we have an in inauguration tomorrow which hopefully goes smoothly like, I don't even want to think about that. I right really there. don't follow American politics very well, so be, I can't be really comment. Thankful. This is why I wish I was Canadian like you. Yeah, uh, well, like I said, we're locked down by our government, and I just signed a petition to get out of it, so we'll see. Um, <laughs> okay. The other thing that happened last week and goes against, uh, goes towards the argument that it was badly promoted, but we found out the day, Wednesday, that there's going to be a debuting new tag team of MSK announced mm. on Twitter, and it ended up being the Rascals, who... Yes. Uh, one has an amazing new name, and the other has one of the worst names possible. So uh, <laughs> I think it's Zach Wentz. He's now known as Nash Carter, yes. which is a pretty good name. What did you say it was? Nash Bridges is right. the joke I made before the, the show. That was Don Johnson, right, in the 90s? Yeah, that's the second Don Johnson show. Yeah, M Miami but, Vice, obviously the bigger one. Mm, yeah. Um, and then uh, Desmond Xavier is now known as Wes Lee. Not one word, separated into two, Wes, last name Lee. 
Uh, that that writer must have strained himself on that one right there, right? Well, well I, I, I've been hearing that it's usually the talent that finds the names themselves, and I'm wondering if uh, the Rascals were doing a little of that Rascal thought thinking, uh, you know, before oh, they decided God. that one. Des, if you're listening to this show, which you're not, if you're the one that thought up that, you need to go look at yourself in the mirror and yeah. think long and hard. There, you, you need to have a sober February and rethink your name. Yeah, God. So wait, do they have the same gimmick? Are they still the that '70s show guys? Uh, they just came out and had a yeah. Rascals match. They didn't really give yeah. any character time, uh, though. The announcer uh, is it Tom? No, Tom Phillips is on Raw. Uh, whatever the announcer is, called them a bunch of Rascals or something in mm. passing. Of of course, they always do that for the first match, and then they forget about it. So, what does MSK mean? No one's explained it. All right. I'm going to go with my stash kills. That's what it is. There you go. There's Honestly, it's probably better than whatever they will come up with. It's it's a nice sounding initial. Uh, I'm not a machine gun Kelly, but MGK, whenever I've seen mm. that, that, I like that. It's kind of like RVD. It just works yeah. to be a good well, name. Yeah. Obviously, we know the man, the myth, the legend, the gang affiliated, hate club, Eastern Block, MDK, all effing day, Nick Gage, right there with the MDK thing rolls off the tongue brilliantly you have no idea what i'm talking about right now i know i like good wrestling will, will you stop thank you gorilla monsoon will, will you stop the heat right now i'm hot man i'm hot you know i love nick gage i know you do and that was a purposeful d dig at you. yeah yeah now well done well done there well i cut you off guard so nxt's got that show coming up tonight and then AEW, once again, a much better promoted show. I'm not sure if mm. it's going to be a better show. but Yeah, it's a, but it's a weaker card. Weaker card. Weaker I card, agree. but still a better promoted show because they probably announced the majority of these matches last Wednesday. They did indeed, yes. So I'm not sure what the draw is of Peter Avalon, but he's taking on <laughs> Cody Rhodes. <laughs> he's what? So he's working. He's doing the Rick Rude gimmick if Rick Rude was a, a nerdy loser. And such. Almost like Rob Conway was doing? Oh, no, no. This is way better than Mr. Just Look at Me. I that, love that, what a, song. that was a great theme. My brother who hates wrestling loved that guy for that theme right there. Um, we mentioned Private Party and Matt Hardy being mm -hmm. on uh, Hard to Kill. They're going to have a match against Top Flight and Matt Seidel. So that'll be, <laughs> for fans of the high-flying match, that'll be a pretty good one. It's it's going to be interesting because it's basically the better version of Matt Hardy and Private Party versus actual Matt Hardy and Private Party. I can't uh, <laughs> say if Top Flight is better than Private oh, Party, man. but in my opinion, anything so is better top, than Private top Party. Top Flight was on Dark last night, wrestling... Right. I don't even remember who they were wrestling, but my goodness, they were awesome. And that these guys are a combined 40 years old. You know, Airwolf is 21. Dante is like 19. And these guys, they're already so smooth. They're like, they don't even seem green anymore. It's nice. amazing how good those guys are. So, yeah, I mean, and you know how I feel about Matt Seidel yeah. and such, who would be right at home with, you know, my stash kills in NXT there. My um, third eye can see what you're about to do, Matt Hardy. I can't believe they haven't done the third eye Matt Seidel versus Luther, who has the third eye on his head right there. That is a can't-miss dark main event. That'll be exactly what I was going to say. Uh, another match that's going to happen is we're getting the return of John Moxley. They haven't announced who he's going to be against, but let's be mm. fair, it doesn't matter. People want to see John Moxley. Mm. Danny Limelight would be a good guy. He was in that match with Omega and the Good Brothers last week and looked really good. Okay. So he would be a good guy there, but I I doubt that they'll uh, they'll go back to that. Just, I know there's been a lot of comparisons over the last year and a half of John Moxley being the Stone hmm. Cold Steve Austin for AEW. I really think that is the way to go because there's hmm. really su his comeback promo. It's generated such emotion out of the fans. Uh, and him coming back to battle Omega. I know we talked about it going to uh, Adam Page, but Omega uh, losing it back to Moxley would be big money. There's a lot of storytelling that could be involved there. You, so, you know, you know. I wonder, now that we're thinking about this, what if it's an Impact guy? Could be. Tonight? 
You know, yeah, like what if Josh I don't Alex think... or Ethan Page might make his debut now that mm-hmm. he's out of impact. That's a good I don't think you can do like Gallows or Anderson. I think no. that would be a match you have to promote right for there. For sure. Yeah. So you have that and the um other match was the uh the inner circle tag team challenge mm-hmm. where it's a triple threat tag team match. Yes. Uh, this Jericho... is easy easily the best match on the show I yeah think. well yeah. name value alone because first right. off you have jericho and mjf as a team right taking on santana and ortiz which is probably the best promoted team of uh everybody that's named on the card here so yep. far and then hager and guevara that you what were they calling themselves sammy hager get it get it get it why can't this be love right <laughs> so they're gonna get they're gonna get higher and higher <laughs> Uh, Pepsi Clear, or Crystal Pepsi, whatever, because they had uh, was it right now as their promotion uh, commercial? They they are gonna reach for the sky and spread their wings, man. <laughs> do, do people get it yet? You get it? You get it? Stop I'm it. turning I'm Just turning stop. into Jericho on commentary, right? Yeah, here. He's freaking annoying too. <laughs> uh, and then speaking of annoying, I'm I'm done with Brody Lee Jr. getting involved, but he's going to have his birthday Boo. festival or celebration. Boo. I'm booing you like the rest of America and Canada. I, um, So that match is uh, Silver, Reynolds, Cabana, and 10? Okay. Right? I think so versus um, Luther. <laughs> you can definitely tell Brody Jr. booked the match. Luther's in it. Luther, Serpentico, and without question, the greatest tag team in professional wrestling today, T H two. Yeah. Right, I, I want to make a comment, but honestly, I do enjoy them. Yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah, my but my boys are getting the payday tomorrow. All right. And there's one more match. Oh, okay. Penelope Ford versus legit Layla Hirsch. Oh, yeah, that was announced because uh N- who- yeah, Nyla it was supposed to be Nyla versus Layla Hirsch. Nyla was in contact with someone who uh, had COVID and Nyla is thankfully a responsible adult and is uh, staying home. And so they're doing Layla versus Penelope Ford instead. A CZW rematch. Ooh. Yes, John Zand- Zandig is uh, very excited if he's not marching to the uh, Capitol again. If it's- that doesn't tell you AEW is nothing but a glorified indie, nothing. Hey, left. hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I'm already let you slide for the Nick Gage thing here. Don't, don't, don't get any more heat on you here. I can take it. Oh. Unfortunately, AEW fans can't. Oh, oh, he, he sips the water afterwards. Is you? Did you mean to do that? Uh, no, I was just thirsty. That's it was still very well timed, right there. Very well Boom. timed. If we're gonna get the heat. We got, we got to do it right. You did it right, right there. Yeah. No problem. I and I'll bash equally. Uh, there's a big reason why the ratings tanked, and his name is Adam Cole. Uh, oh, the guy yeah. is the most overrated NXT star of the last I'm, since the existence I'm, of NXT. I'm going to choose to believe WWE ratings are going down because people are like, "Who's on this show? T Bar? What <laughs> else is on, man?" It's not on T Bar's shoulder. It's the fact that someone named him T Bar and put him in that dumbass yeah. group. Well. Don, Donovan Dickhead, as some people call him, you know, where, regardless of the gimmick, you know, he's just, he's yeah. got go, go away heat with me, man. Definitely. Go, Mason right Ali, now. Mason Ali, although Mace needs to work on her, doing Hiromu Takahashi. Her, yeah, that's Hiromu Takahashi's uh, finisher, the time bomb. He needs to watch a little more Hiromu to get it right the next that time. That was really bad. <laughs> Um, what I'm excited for quickly is I want to see more Billy Kay. She's been evolving her character. She joined the riot squad last Friday on SmackDown and, uh, claimed on Twitter. She's been punk ever since she heard her first fallout boy record. (laughs) It's, it's perfect. That is great. It's been amazing. That's That's like the kids at high school. I'm so punk rock. Simple plan is my favorite band, man. Uh, remember, the, Simple Plan came from Montreal like I did, and I hated them before you ever heard of them. Um, they were um, garbage. The people in the bad religion shirts, when they hear that, are just like, go sit at that other table, yeah. man. We're, Get we're out of here. the bro him crowd over here. Yes, 
Pennywise. Yes. Woo. Um, and I um, hate punk. That's so- <laughs> hey, 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 you, you are really pushing it, man. Except you're, for the Ramones, uh, I'm not much for the. Punk scene. Next thing you're gonna tell me, the Nordiques should never come back. The Nordiques should never come back. You're, you're, you're pushing it. You're pushing it. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come to Ontario. We're gonna settle this. Like the border's T-bar. closed, you idiot. You're not coming we're, anywhere. We're going to settle this like T-Bar and Sammy Guevara. Oh, yeah. To anyone following that Twitter <laughs> war, what a pathetic. Now that's when you could call him Donovan Dickhead. <laughs> Donovan Dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> Triple H will love me now. No. Ah. <laughs> well, we're going to sign off because it's been an hour and a half, and he's been putting up with my garbage, and I've been putting up with AEW for an hour and a half. Oh! He's still so going for it. We are going to sign off and see you again next week. We'll talk about what happened tonight on uh, the mm-hmm. men- Wednesday Night War NXT. Oh. I'm sure there'll be some updates from Raw and SmackDown. Hopefully there's a big story. We've gone now two weeks without there being anything really, you know, juicy. Like for a few weeks, we had a lot of stuff to talk about. And now wrestling is like, now you guys get nothing. Well, I've been enjoying the TV shows, except for the ones oh, yeah. I don't watch. I mean, I like I've been enjoying the TV shows I watch too. That's good, but like we need some meat on the bone here, man. We need some Taya sign with someone so we there have something to talk about next week. Or Ethan Page or something. But we'll yeah. talk about yeah. that most likely. Actually, before we go, you mm. bring up Ethan Page. You heard about this karate man controversy, Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Is that not that that's the only thing that's stupider than T-Bar versus Sammy Guevara. Oh, well, the fact that he released the, his own edit of the match and the fact that he's slamming impact mm-hmm. for the way they edited their version. Right. And then, yeah. And then there was, there was somebody who made up this fake report, this pro fake pro impact report. That was like, he didn't want to put Josh Alexander over he and all this stuff like like no. Ethan Page wouldn't want to do the honors for his good friend. Yeah. Like, come on, people. Yeah. They they just didn't book that match and they wanted to give him mm. some creative leeway. The, the one thing I'm gonna always give impact mm. credit for, and we saw that with the rascals, they really refused to make their guys look like assholes on their way out. Yeah. They make a good oh, yeah, job they made res- them look great. They make Very- them look great. They really give them respect. And they probably told Ethan Page, what do you want to do? You want to do this cinematic match against your extra character? Let's do it. Right. And now he's complaining about it. It doesn't make him look all that great, but at the same time, the match yeah. wasn't all that great either. So I don't know what to who to Well, you, you you know how it goes with impact. It's not it's not an impact departure for the most part if there isn't some controversy involved, other than with the rascals. They handled that. Well, but for every Rascals, there's Ethan Page, there's Killer Cross, there's a bunch of other people. It's the way and it goes. We, and speaking of the Rascals, there's a third member that we don't really know who what's going on with Trey Miguel, and that could end up being controversial hmm. somehow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to come in as just in. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Because, you know, Wes Lee. Oh. Yeah. 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 That bombed right there. That bombed more than T-Bar in Monday Night Raw. There you go. I've you got, got your slam my, in and it worked. I, I've gotten several on him in. Come at me, dickhead. Low-hanging fruit, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Well, on that note, we're out of here. See you next week, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye.